Hello all YouTubers, I'm The Weather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for having back into this tropical discussion for September 5th, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest forecast and best forecast from The Weather Dude, then please, every single one of you that is not subscribed, please click the subscribe and the ring and the notification bell so you guys stay up to date with the latest The Weather Dude content. And also, please watch the whole video. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for a thousand subscribers. It really does mean a lot to me. And this is taking the next step towards monetization. So please watch the whole video. It really does help out my channel a lot. And also, please give this video a like and share this with your friends. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. You guys know what today's video is about. We have three potential tropical cyclones in the Atlantic Ocean. I know. And it could have been four. I believe one of them might have faded out. I know one up here actually developed yesterday and kind of faded again. Um, there could have been four, but we are down to three. I'm excluding Tropical Depression Omar, which is still hanging on. Don't ask me how. Uh, it currently has to stay once at 35 miles an hour. It's moving north at 10, so it's gradually moving away. But what we're focusing on today is three tropical cyclones, two off the coast of Africa, one now is in the Caribbean, uh, and how these three pot could potentially form into tropical cyclones. So we're going to start the easternmost one here, which the current location of it is on the western part of Africa. It has an 80% chance to develop in the next five days, but the two-day development chance is only 20%. So it'll probably have a better chance to develop in within the next five days. So another tropical wave uh, is inland over western Africa right now, but it will be moving offshore on Sunday. And because he's in gradual development of the storm system, we could have a tropical depression by middle of next week as this moves over the tropical Atlantic or could even be a tropical storm. They're just saying tropical depression to be safe. Um, then we have another one here that just to the west of that one. Currently, this is located about 50, 100, maybe a couple hundred miles west of the Cabo Verde Islands here. So this is actually a low pressure located over the western tropical Atlantic, or eastern tropical Atlantic, excuse me. Well, it's continuing to produce a large area. It's a lot of showers and storms, but they're kind of disorganized. Um, because again, see some develop, development as it moves west, northwestward. All right, and we could even see a storm form late this weekend or even early next week as it reaches the central Atlantic. But the two-day development chance is 60%, which is still good. Now, the question is, can it stay north, but yet far south enough to track into the east coast of the United States? That's the question. Because we know that usually, now, with the exception of Florence, if storms get far north enough, usually they like to turn out to sea and head towards, you know, well to the east, maybe even towards Europe. But it's, if this storm gets lucky, if it stays far south enough, it does have the possibility um, to head towards the Caribbean, maybe the East Coast. Now, the one in the Caribbean only has a 10% development chance because it literally, I think it just came up recently, like today. Um, this is a tropical wave on the East Central Caribbean. We are seeing some showers and storms. We could see some slight development over the next couple of days, um, but then there's going to be upper level winds will become too unfavorable for any kind of formation. Plus, there could be a little bit of dry air hanging. So, uh, this will be moving... Uh, westward across the central and western Caribbean over the next few days, and it's only a 10% chance of development. All right, so with that said, let's look at Invest 91L. All right, 91L, I think actually 91L, I don't think it's on the Hurricane Center map anymore because I know when I was looking at it, I know this is 92L right here. I don't think this one is actually an Invest yet, believe it or not, even though it has a high development chance, which uh, it depends on the storm. So 91L, I believe, because... If you look at the current location of 91L, as, as you can see right here, I'll even refresh it for you. It's about 37 and a half degrees west and about 11 degrees north. But if you go on the National Hurricane Center, there's nothing that fits that coordinate. So I think 91L is actually located right about here. Um, for some reason, the National Hurricane Center is not watching it anymore, but it is still an invest. All right, maybe it could be an invest for a little bit longer. But this also has sustained winds of 30 miles an hour. This could be actually combined with 92L, maybe. This could be the low pressure combined with 92L. Uh, pressure is 1,008 millibars, right? So it's not bad. Now, 92L, again, 30 mile per hour winds. Pressure is a tad bit higher than 1,009 millibars, all right? So when we take a look, uh, that's where 91L is located. I showed you guys that. Now, here is what 91L looks like on the satellite imagery, all right? 92L is not too far behind it. It really, it looks like it's almost getting stretched apart. Look at this convective activity. Look. Part of it goes this way and part of it goes this way. So it's like it's getting stretched apart here. Um, why is that? Well, apparently it looks like we have some easterly shear because it's blowing some of these cloud tops off, like a southeasterly shear. At the same token, though, we may even have some northeast shear breaking apart this way. All right, the storms just seem to be breaking apart 
Um, I think there could be a little bit too much shear. There's some dry air as well. Although we're seeing some convective activity develop on the northeastern side of this. So 91L's latest track guidance shows it actually moving northeast and then turning maybe towards the west or in the northern direction out to sea. So it's like this storm is actually located, all right, because this is 92L here. So this storm is actually located like here and it's moving this way is what they're saying. All right, so that is a possibility. So looking at some of the GEFS tracks, um, as you can see, they bring it northeastward and sharp hook back towards the west, but it probably won't be much of it left. I, th I think 92L, um, any other system that's inland, inland over Africa and the one in the Caribbean are the three we have to watch here. But one of the models has it becoming a storm below 970 millibars of pressure at one point, which is probably not true, but you never know. Moving northeast and then some models on the GFS parallel, some drop it towards the southeast, some take it towards the northwest again. So the models are really at a disagreement, but they are agreeing up the track over the next 24 hours moving northeast. This storm is probably not really a threat to land, although a couple of the models do suggest an increase in wind strength. Some bring it to a tropical depression, some bring it to a tropical storm. I don't think 91L is too much of a concern for us. However, 92L could be. And we just got the 18Z track, or the 18Z location for uh, 92L here. So here it is, latest one right here. And you can see it is now located about 33 and a half degrees west and about 18 and a half degrees north. Right, so looking at down the south imagery, like I said, it's an invest. You're not going to see too much from this yet, all right? But we are starting to see a little bit of rotation in there. It's trying to get its act together. Um, there's Obviously, there's no eye, but I think there actually is maybe a developing center right in here, maybe, or in here. So right around there, right around here, I think we are starting to see a center develop because we just got the latest um, storm location, the, storm, the center of the low. So actually, yes, the storm center is located right there. Uh, and it's moving its way towards the west. But notice, once it moves over here, this could actually be part of 91L. Um, where I'm noticing, again, some of the activity is getting strewn off in this direction. Like, the convective activity is trying to break off of it. Now, when you're looking at a hurricane, it may, it may look like it's it. this has some outflow boundary, but this isn't really developing it. It doesn't really have outflow because it's not actually developing a tropical cyclone. Um, this could actually be the result of shear pushing this apart. But there's also, it looks like there's something rising out of the south there. Some convective activity to the south. Now, MS 92L model track guidance. We're getting the 18Z data in for this now. They have it moving towards the west, northwest. Obviously, since 18Z just came up, there's not going to be too many models looking at this. Uh, the GEFS, all right, we've got some refreshing here. And you can see moving towards the west, but they have it making a sharper turn towards the north and going out to sea. Like I said, it all depends on the 500 millibar steering, is what I always tell you guys. All depends. GEFS parallel. So they have it moving in a northwest direction or so, west-northwest direction. A couple of them, this is kind of like an ensemble, a couple of them bring it towards the west. Others have it rapidly strengthening, but heading towards the north and out to sea. So it sounds like what the GFS parallel is doing is either keeping it farther south and maybe a little bit weaker, or maybe going towards the north and a little bit stronger. Because all the tracks, or most of the tracks that bring the storm to the north actually make it stronger. But all the tracks that keep it towards the south are a little bit weaker. Higher pressure, weaker storm. Lower pressure, stronger storm. So some of the intensity guidance from this, we're getting new intensity guidance data in, and look at this. A lot of the models do make this now a tropical storm. Some make it, actually, all but one, I think, do. Every single one except for the AVNI, or excuse me, the um, AEMI. All the other models on this list do make this at least a tropical storm. Some a weak tropical storm, some a strong tropical storm, pretty much maybe a hurricane. Or uh, one model makes it a hurricane. A ship model, like I said, sometimes is... Um, Kind of like the outlier, but in this case, they're not too far off. All right? I mean, obviously, we have to listen to every model because you never know. And most of these models do now make this a 92L tropical storm. Data is just coming in. So as for 91L, let's go back to 91L briefly. All right. Um, as you can see, um, as for the shear for the storm, it's going to be going up to the 30s, so about 30 plus knots or so. All right. Um, and then we have the sea surface temperatures hovering around 28, but notice. As it starts moving north, the sea surface temperatures could drop to 26 and maybe come back. But by the time the sea surface temperatures warm up again, the storm could be dead already. We never know. Um, the storm could be fizzled out. Now, the storm speed and knots, actually, according to this, it's actually not even moving, which I actually do agree with because I've been wondering it's been sitting in the same spot for a while. So according to our ship's diagnostic message here, the storm is not moving right now, but it will slowly pick up pace. It, it may not start moving. Up, like It won't even be moving faster than 10 miles per hour until maybe four days later. 
All right, then then it'll start moving at closer to you know 18, 20 miles an hour, which is a little bit faster than the storm should be moving. But honestly, picking up pace, getting it out of here, that's fine. Now heat content values are very low. They could go up at the end. Like right now, they're less than 20 through the next week. At the end, maybe we will see. Maybe it goes up. Like I said, what is left of the storm by then? According to this, I think it could still be a tropical entity, whether it's a depression or a storm. But they do think something will still become of this after a week, so we'll see. So here's Invest 92L now on our ship's diagnostic message. So going through the key elements here and the key factors, one of them is a shear, all right? The shear, um, not looking too good in the near future and over the next few days. Now for right now, it's sure is actually really good. 10, 15 or 10, 15 miles an hour, or AKA nine to 12 knots. That's not bad. All right. And then we could see, you know, it start to go up. All right. We'll have to wait because if the shear gets too high where a storm can't manage because of the newborn storm, if it gets, if it can't manage it, that certain amount of shear on um, 30 knots, a little bit too much and it could dissipate. You can't overwhelm. Now, if you, put 25 or 30 knots of shear on a category five hurricane, it's gonna do a lot better. The storm is very healthy, but for an invest, the storm is not healthy yet. It's a, it's a little child getting ready to grow up. So we have to wait. Now, as for the sea surface temperatures, um, they're hovering near 80 degrees. Um, I believe 26 and a half Celsius marks 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So water temperatures should stay right at or just above 80 for the, for the entire lifespan of the storm system, the entire duration. Um, as for storm speed at the bottom here, it's moving pretty fast. Right now, it's moving at like 23 miles an hour or so. Um, that could slow down, though, and over the next week, it could even slow, slow to a complete crawl. Um, heat content at that same period as the storm slows to a crawl, we could see heat content go up at the same time. So that's not good. This storm could maybe gain some more strength. But according to this, this could still be, again, a tropical entity over the next few days still. Like I, like I said, depending on what happens to come of it. So the tropical cyclone heat potentials here, we got our next hourly update. Uh, it's looking pretty high across the Caribbean, but like I said, the storms are way out here. As for that third system in the Caribbean I was telling you guys about, that's why I pulled this map up, because I wanted to show you the storm is, uh, looks like in the Caribbean, it's starting to gain a little bit of strength. That's the one benefit of a storm being in the Caribbean is that there's a lot of tropical cyclone heat potential. You'll never have to worry about that being low, especially between you know, May and October. Um, pretty much heat content will pretty much always be at a more elevated level. Um, now, when we look at the GFS model real quick, um, as you can see, look at the storms rotating. Look, this could be 90, this is 92L here. This is the storm behind 92L. All right, so here's the two, those are, these could be twin storms. So the National Hurricane Center, here's 92L. Here's the other system coming off of Africa. All right, so this is starting to get a little, starting to get pretty interesting. All right, we can see development of two tropical cyclones. Who knows, maybe even three. Now, like, wait, why are you so shocked that the title of this video is Three Tropical Cyclones? No, this actually could be our fourth one because we're our third one's in a Caribbean. So one, two, three, and maybe a fourth one that was that's earlier on in the Caribbean. So, yes, we we definitely have a lot to watch out for. I definitely want to keep it here for updates because it can get pretty out of hand. One storm, this second storm right here, the one behind 92L, could become a strong tropical storm by this point. And maybe something else developing behind that. Now, real quick... I do want to go to Western Atlantic because um, I want to see what what become we could what could possibly become of that Caribbean storm. So let's go back to our cyclonic vorticity map here, all right, and show you guys. So DFS actually really doesn't say that anything could come of the system, be, probably because there's too much upper level winds and really there's actually nothing. Now, however, now as I say that there could be something that merges in the Gulf of Mexico, but like I said, what, how strong is it exactly by then is the question. All right, and then we have, there's 92L, and then the, the three storms parading off of Africa start coming in eventually. So here's our NCEP, FNMOC, our GEM, our European model, chances for tropical development. Now, as for that Caribbean storm, the chance of development over the next five days, they actually have at 10 to 20%, so about 20%. As for 92L, however, they have... I believe that yes, 60 to 70% chance to develop. And as for the storm behind 92L, 40 to 50% chance to develop. All right. And that's th and that uh, that other system that comes behind the storm that's behind 92L, I'm gonna it's like a tongue twister. That's so the storm behind the storm that's behind 92L, um, they don't have we don't have quite any data on that yet. Now, NCP ensemble based probabilities, you can see 92L they call for a hundred percent development chance almost indicated by the pink. Uh, but the good news is the ensembles are indicating that the storms could turn north. Um, 92L is actually, 
if you look, 92L is a lot more farther north than the storm behind it. So um, 92L has a better chance to make a northward turn and go out to sea and, and affect nobody. With that said, though, you know, this, this storm could pull another Florence and just still continue to move westbound. And a storm behind 92L to give, I believe, a about 80 to 90 or 80 to 90, 80 to 90 excuse me, percent chance or so. And we're getting some updates in on this. So here's the, um, these are just three models now, except we took out European for this one. So this is the NCP, FNMOC, and the GEM model. Um, again, 80 to 90% chance to develop with the first storm, maybe a 60, 70, maybe close to 80% chance to develop with the second storm. And a similar develop here, again, with the ensemble. But this set of ensembles, all right, has it staying a little bit farther south, but still a lot of the models have it turning out the sea. So we'll see. Hopefully that is the case because we don't need any more hurricanes or tropical systems this year. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Please consider checking out my other video for today where I talk about our first September snowstorm potentially. This is going to be very interesting. So thank you guys for watching today's video. I am Dweller Dude signing off. Till next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video.